Hey, Worship You. Welcome to our discussion on prophetic worship. I'm here with Brian and Jen Johnson. How are you guys? Good. Very good. Very good good to see you guys. Doing well. So today what we're going to do is talk about prophetic worship and why we do it. And then uh, after we have a little bit of a discussion, we're actually going to watch through a moment that you guys led together at worship school this summer. And I'm just going to ask you some questions about what you were feeling, what you were thinking, how you led the band and the crowd in those moments so that we can break that down for our viewers at home, make it a little simpler for them to enter into it at what they're doing in their church. Right on. Love it. So my first question is, why do we do the prophetic song? I think, you know, there's just those, we sing these amazing songs and, you know, you you can just feel the Lord is just saying something. And and sometimes that is carried out in the words of the song. You know, the leader, they really just pray through the songs that they are choosing for the week. And um, a lot of times that's carried out then, but sometimes it just gets to a moment um, where the song has ended, where we just tell the band, you know, keep going, there's something else I feel like. And we just do our best to sing out, um, play out, whatever we feel the Lord is, is asking us to do. And we just do our best to follow it. And I think, With anything in life, you just get better at things that you practice. And I think we're still practicing, but God's been so faithful to us. We just go with what we feel he's saying or doing or playing that we just, yeah, he comes through. I think there's that moment in worship where you get to where you know something, that you feel Mm -hmm. something's supposed to happen or should happen, or you're leading the church into this, you're like, we're supposed to, something's supposed to happen. (laughs) <laughs> and then, uh, so a lot of times I think it's that just put one foot in front of the other moment where you don't exactly know sometimes. Like sometimes like totally. you'll get like a like a, a theme, like a real strong like impression or something like this is what God's going after today or whatever, or, you know, a picture or whatever. Sometimes you just, you can just feel like I'm supposed to step out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then one thing leads to the next and you, you step out, you start playing and you start figuring out and then all of a sudden, then it comes, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then sometimes it's like, you know, it's like fishing. You just keep casting out until you catch it. And sometimes it's taken, like, I don't know, in a lot of these moments, like, it took a little, a few minutes even sometimes, mm-hmm. just, or even more, just to, to land that thing into, like, okay, this, this is that, well, God, this is what, the, this is that vein we just fell into. Um, but there's a lot of risk involved. You're just stepping out because you know God's doing something, not exactly sure what it is sometimes. So I think it's both. It's sometimes, it, and I love it when it is like, for Jen, I think sometimes I'll, I can tell like it's just gonna hit, it just hits her across the face. Like she's got a word, bam. You just and, look and, over and him. I'll, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just there. And then, and then there's other times where you have to set it, the atmosphere mm-hmm. is created, and then all of a sudden, you know, you yeah. get yeah. the song, so. Sure. That's really good. So uh, before we jump into actually watching the moment, uh, real quick, I want to give our viewers that biblical basis for why we go into the prophetic song, that it's not just something that we do, but it's actually something that the Bible talks about yeah. doing. Yeah. So, Well, in the, in the Bible, uh, the breakthrough, follow the prophetic song, you know, um, the prophetic sound. Um, I mean, Jericho was a good example of that. We were just in Israel, and we drove by Jericho, and I was like, "Oh my word, this is where it happened." That shout, you know. Yeah. Um, to, the spontaneous, out, the Tehila praise, the spontaneous outburst of the spirit. It's an outburst of that spirit praise that God promises to inhabit. There's something on that when God promises to inhabit your praise, He means business, and it's a spontaneous outburst. And there's something about when you can't help it. I watched you this. You can't help express yourself through praise. <clears throat> It is prophetic in nature. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like you can't go wrong. You know, uh, when you when you keep love as the focus of our of our worship and devotion to God, you kind of can't go wrong. And a lot of times, I think you know, it, people like me, maybe you're in your head and a little, you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to find the song. It's like you know what? I, I, it's 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 e- easier to find it when you stay in love, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he keeps connected because he tells us his servants the secrets. He he tells us people that are close to his heart, his secrets. And I've watched Jen do this where break out of the mold, break the box in the moment because of love and she's hearing something specific from God because there's a connection there that she's not um, letting go of. She's stewarding that moment. Yeah. So it's really important that um, as as musicians, as producer mindset people, as, as the kind of people that we remember that that spontaneous outburst of the spirit isn't always smooth Mm-mm. and perfect and makes sense. Right. to your logic. Yeah. You know, sometimes these worship leaders would just, they're so passionate to go after God and, and we're going like, you know, the band, that, 
that's working in my box. And like, yeah, yeah I get used to that. A spontaneous <laughs> outburst of the spirit doesn't fit in a box. Yeah. And I think we need to remember that when it comes to prophetic praise. Mm. I love the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, you know, and that, mm -hmm. that to me always is encompassing not just singing a song, but a spiritual song. That means something that's connected to your spirit, you know, so it's spirit to spirit. And yeah. so I think that, you know, not only do we um, do that from a stage, but we also encourage our body to sing out a song that they're feeling or they're sensing too. So I think it's a spiritual song is something that the point of it is that is that we're connecting to God on a personal level outside of words or, or music, but that we're singing to God our heart and who He is to us and who we are through Him. I think that, that it's that personal connect that God just really loves. Yeah, that's beautiful. Speaking, speaking of that, like singing out your own song, we'll go ahead and jump in here. And one of the first things that, that you do gonna, as we go. Josh? So <laughs> this was, oh, yeah, no, I'll let you know. Surprise. So uh, this is from Worship School 2017. And you guys were leading a Our set. Favorite this is day worship one. times of the Absolutely. year, other That's than so good. Day one conference. Day one, you were leading with Chris Q Our and favorite. the band. And uh, Jen had. This is about maybe halfway through the set, probably twenty five minutes into it. And uh, and Jen had just finished singing the mention of your name. Yep. And uh, and even that in and of itself had kind of like died down and gone back up. Uh, but then we go into this <clears throat> pretty good lengthy portion where Jen leads out, then you lead out, and then Jen leads out again. So we'll watch through it. And as we go along, uh, I'll have some spots where I'll pause it, but as well for you, if you catch things where you're like, oh, this was actually, yeah. Yeah. then let me know and we'll, we'll pause it and chat about it for okay. a moment. Okay. But yeah, so right. Well, but it wasn't time yet. It wasn't time. He was developing time. it. Mm -hmm. But you could feel like it wasn't time yet. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's like a whole minute of just basically Selah or rest. Yeah. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that Selah moment? We use that term. I love, I don't know if I'd necessarily call that a Selah because mm. I, I feel like that, there was, that was more interactive okay. going on, more than just like a, a silent moment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I just... What gives me the goosebumps? Even listen to it is you can just feel it, the it, like when you when you blow on a fire. Yeah. When like you're making a fire and you blow on it, and all of a sudden it just you can feel that when they caught it as a room and when they just went for it as a room, the whole atmosphere changed. You know, it was good before, yeah. but it just went to like it's everywhere. You know. Yeah. So well, that's, that's good. That's like the dream as the worship leader. The dream. Like yeah. what Bill said. I think you guys say it too is like you your can, job is to become invisible, and when the the audience just takes the moment over. Yes. Yeah, you have to lead in the beginning, but the goal is that you get. So in the beginning, work. you kind of had that say it was a say that little that moment of pause, rest of attention. Where are we going? That little thing, you know. Yeah, you're. And then it's now it's starting to turn into the crowd is is. And it really to heal it, that that yeah. phrase. It's really good for people who are on an instrument to know that that moment happened because he Brian stayed on those two chords mm. right there, and that moment wouldn't kind have happened. Covering. Yeah, hovering, yeah, hovering. That moment wouldn't have happened like that had he just stopped playing. So for musicians, stay in, keep your keyboard pad in really good. and play something very simple, just a few chords. Um, and some, sometimes in order to sing something, it has to be, you can't just play all over the place, whatever you're feeling. It, the best, if it's yeah. really gonna go somewhere, is if the chord progression is very simple and then the singer can get that chord progression so they can kind of, like he's doing, and then we start singing something off the mic and the. And then they can change, you know, in, in it we can go somewhere out of that. And we do. Sometimes this might go into like 
from one to one sus to a four to one over three. Mm-hmm. And then we might start we might start going around, but it starts usually starts here. But the main thing, like playing guitar, there is, and I think a lot of time we're, we're running over the, the, the people with our sound, and a lot of times it's just these moments of, of where there's just teaching your bands is to be like, all right, just hold a pad or lay off nothing, and you're playing, you're trying to play notes that are just sensitive and feel right in the moment. Mm-hmm. When I was just playing those things, and I was changing things up, but but again, fishing, just kind of like feeling it out. Mm-hmm. And, but we, I feel like we landed in this little vein. Mm-hmm. And then you could tell Jen starts doing her thing. And then at that moment, it's important that I'm steady and I'm, hold, I'm in a holding <laughs> pattern mm-hmm. so that I'm not veering off somewhere where it's causing people to get distracted out of that specific right. moment. But it, even that moment grows and it yeah. moves on into other things. But we need to, that sensitivity is important. And the band is following really well in this moment. They're not overplaying. They're not melodically doing a bunch of Mm-hmm. to stuff because we're all in a holding pattern. But, but the room is starting to take it over, and that's what you were saying is we're in a holding pattern, we're in simple, but the room is starting to take over the moment, which is the goal. Mm-hmm. And n- now we're just following the room, Yeah, r- r- really. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was so good. Like, yeah. so many good points in there. So we'll, we'll keep watching as it starts getting even Hopefully bigger. Hopefully it's good. Thank you.